Hello everyone again. So in this section we are talking about service orientation and service orientation in the public sector. So um, as we discussed in the previous session, um, services have increased their relevance during the last hundred years, even more so uh, with the public sector services. But now the service orientation literature has emerged and this means that we are now talking about actually two different kinds of service orientation. So we are talking about service orientation from the organizational point of view and service orientation from the individual point of view. And um, the organization um, tries to understand what processes can be made more efficient, how can the existing uh, business tasks uh, can be made more um, interoperable, so to say. And the individual uh, service orientation means that we are looking at how a worker in an organization or uh, individuals overall could understand and see services from their point of view. So um, when we're talking about those two different service orientations, we are actually talking about the idea of service orientation. And this means that it creates the ability um, to make business processes and the organizations work more efficient. It also means that the organization wants to uh, look and anticipate what is needed or wanted in, in the context of that organization. But we can also talk about service orientation from an architectural point of view. And that means that we are talking about business tasks that are seen as services. So it means that the tasks or the services should be loosely coupled, they should be interoperable, and that would make organizations work more efficiently. So we can reuse the existing parts of the organization or the service and make it more cost efficient in that sense, for example. Also, when we are talking about service orientation in the public sector context, we are talking about the ideas of scalability, flexibility and adaptability. And as said before, we need to use what is already out there to reuse uh, those parts and make the public sector in that sense more efficient. Service orientation also means that we are using existing services or existing business tasks or even new business uh, assets uh, in a more controlled way to manage and deal with the, uh, uh, the service design and development in a more concrete manner. But coming back to SOA, which is service-oriented architecture, as uh, I already discussed before, we are talking about services um, as they should be loosely coupled, they should be easily discovered, services should be adaptable, and there should also be standardized service concepts included. In addition to these previously mentioned characteristics of uh, service-oriented architecture, services should also be aut autonomous. And one of the examples that could be brought out from the Estonian context is the X road, for example. That is a very good example of um, service-oriented architecture in the public sector. So in the next session, we will be talking about service design and service design thinking. So stay tuned. Thank you.